Gents, thanks for tuning in to Core Performance. I'm Will from Cattail Antennas, and today we're going to be talking about comms. So Core Performance invited me out here to discuss routing my antenna systems and OEM antenna systems through the XO plate carrier and then other carriers that may be out there. So a little bit about me, I served five years in the Marine Corps uh, as a radio operator, and in a 2017 deployment, I noticed there was a lack of wearable antenna systems, especially when you're working in vehicle-borne operations. So that was when I started the development. Coming back stateside, I turned that idea into a durable product uh, along with my relocation cables. So besides my military solutions, I also noticed the market was open for civilian solutions, wildland firefighters and law enforcement. We're gonna be going over some of those today. Today we're gonna be talking about a military loadout, a civilian loadout, a kind of a hybrid between a law enforcement and an upgraded civilian loadout, and then a long range reconnaissance loadout and for a wildland firefighters, a wildland firefighter loadout. So for the military setup, we have a core performance EXO carrier. And on the side here, we have a PRC-152, pretty common in the military. You see the M biters, but for this demonstration, we're using a 152. To start off, the PTT, this is a standard, um, you, you get them issued pretty commonly, a U94. But for the antenna system, we have my up-armored relocation kit with a 90 degree TNC adapter here. And we're gonna kind of demonstrate how that goes on your plate carrier. We're utilizing the cummerbund on the side because it's a 90 degree and it shoots this way to weave through. And the cool thing about a relocation cable is you don't need to worry too much about the weave pattern because it is just relocating the actual antenna. The antenna back here is sending out the signal. So unlike my wearable antennas, you can, you can have some fun with it and do it how you want. Now on the back here, we are relocating a three foot whip. This is your OEM whip. Um, everyone who has a 152 gets issued out. You can notice here, and this is a, a big point for anyone utilizing a relocation kit, our connection point is up into the carrier. If it was down low, you're creating a bend point when you're sitting down in a vehicle or laying prone or rolling or whatever you may be doing. So routing this three foot whip into the plate carrier here can be kind of hit or miss depending on the carrier you have, but it's really nice with this XO, we have all these nice open pieces that we can push the antenna through. So we actually just pushed it through those slots. We used some Velcro and it's, it's nice and secured. Um, what I've seen guys do is zip tie it, the Velcro works good. So for the PTT, a great thing about this XO is there is a nice laser cut chunk right here and that fits really good on these alligator clips for the U94s. Um, if you didn't want to alligator clip it in, you could actually ranger band it around and there's a lot of nice openings for it. Now in this military setup, we're demonstrating the relocation cable, and this would be primarily for maybe an RTO role or a leadership role because when we expand this antenna, this three foot whip, you're getting a lot more range out of it. It's still not in your way. But we could absolutely use one of my wearable antennas. Um, I sell the squad leader, which is a direct input just like this with TNC. And then I sell the RTO, which um, has a quick detach. And then that would weave through your carrier. Mom, it's a multiplayer game. I can't pause it. Next up is a civilian carrier setup. So we have an entry level radio in here and this is the Bofang UV5R. Uh, we have a Great Plains Creation Exo kit on there and this whole thing is running on the Exo carrier. Now the PTT is what we call the cop mics. Uh, you can get these from BTEC, they're, they're pretty decent mics. This one I modified to make a little bit shorter and that's what some guys like to do to remove clutter when you set up your comms kit. The antenna setup on here is my 90 degree variant of the Bofang package. So it's gonna include one of the Bofang adapters and a 90 degree mounted antenna, that's BNC. And when we route it, since it's 90 degree, we're utilizing, just like on the relocation cable, the cummerbund. But we're ensuring to give it good spacing here because this antenna, the colored 550 portion, is what's actually propagating the signal. So we're making sure that goes through, goes through, it comes up, and like we said before, that XO has these great nice little cuts in it, and we're routing it in a U-type shape. If you can't do a U, try to do a straight. 
Um, if you can do a U, that from the testing I've done propagates the best. Mom, are the chicken tendies done? Yes. So we have this carrier here to show the law enforcement side of things along with EMS and the higher end world of uh, civilian communication, something that we're in the community trying to strive more towards. So what we have here is an EF Johnson radio. This is a surplus from a fire department and these are readily available online. We have a 90 degree antenna here that is one of my shorty models. So it's cut to length to be just about shoulder width height or you could use it on your belt and it has a sm small little antenna on there and that's for these higher frequency band radios you commonly see with EMS, fire and uh, police. Now for the microphone, you get into some issues depending on how you like to shoulder your weapon and what's comfortable for you. So for this rig, we went with the shoulder mic on the right side of the shooter, but attaching it on a left side radio can be kind of difficult. So to do that, we did a little routing, put it through, put it along the side. We use utilized zip ties down here, put it under our ice plate, had it come back up, zip tied some more, and then gave some flex here so we can easily attach it on and off when we need to don our gear. Something everyone should be running on a carrier is a hydration source. And the IMS system here is a great solution. Now, it doesn't matter if you have an IMS or just a normal bladder. When you're utilizing one of these wearable antennas that I sell, the longer models or the shorter models, you never want it to be in between or behind a hydration source. So if we had a longer antenna here that had to mount through this panel, we would never want to put it on the carrier and then put the IMS over it. That would be blocking the signals. So in this instance, we would actually mount it on the IMS itself. So a lot of you are probably wondering what makes this radio different from my Bofang. Well, this is a surplus radio from a fire department and you can find these readily online. It's an EF Johnson. And these radios allow the install of encryption and a lot different frequencies than the Bofang does. Um, if you want some more information on that, Communications and Logistics on Instagram has some great reading material to get you upgraded from something that's not safe to communicate over the air to something that's secure. Next one here we got is the recce build. So we're working on the CRH core performance rig here. On the side we have a 152 with my RTO right angle kit. It's a standard RTO antenna with a 90 degree right angle adapter on here for the 152. We have it coming up the side. We have some Velcro to keep it nice and clean. We have the antenna pushing over the shoulder here and then on the back. And what's a cool thing about this chest rig is you get hydration built into the rig itself. So we have one of the core performance ice plates inside of here, which is super important if you're moving long distances, you need that hydration. If you notice how my wearable antenna here is routed throughout the carrier, it's, we're still in that U shape, but we're utilizing these nice laser cuts to actually go in, out, in, out, and that keeps it from being a snag hazard. You can do this without weaving it that nice, but you have the risk of a snag hazard and you have the risk of it getting caught or tugged out back. Now, depending on the unit SOP, it seems pretty obvious that when you're transporting this gear uh, in terms of going overseas or just simply between a state via a vehicle or a plane, you want to remove your communication equipment. Just like you would put a rifle in a case, you'd want to put this in a secure location. Weaving and unweaving this antenna can be kind of a big deal, a big pain. So what a little trick, a little bonus for y'all is to disconnect your radio, stow that away. And you have this exposed connection and this could be prone to bump and, and getting tossed around a lot. So what you can take if you're a uh, chewer or you know someone who is, cut a small little hole below the lid, just like that. And that allows you to stow away that connection point and make it secure. Last up for our wildland firefighters out there, we got a Mystery Ranch Hotshot pack and we have the Hotshot antenna package that I offer. Now the radio here, which is a BK radio, very common with wildland firefighters, 
We have it to attach into a pouch on the waist strap. Now, as you can tell, this isn't a military pack, so you're not gonna see many attachment points for accessories. So we kinda gotta look where we wanna route our stuff. We're routing this wearable antenna through a little slot right here. We have it coming up. There's another little slot around here. We have it coming down. And one of the only little sections of Molly here, we have it finished routing through. Now the cop mic or the handset, we gotta route that a little bit different and we gotta make it really accessible to us because we gotta be able to use it anytime, any place. So we have it routing on the bottom of the pack, coming up. We actually are utilizing a zip tie here where we routed the wearable antenna to this little loop, zip tied it there and attached it to the clip on the shoulder strap. Now, if you noticed our two zip ties here are at points where there's really no movement, where it's not gonna interfere. Luckily, these are bungee style cords so they can move. If you wanted to open this up, you could simply move that cord out of the way. We also didn't put a zip tie up in this section either. And that's so if you didn't have the pack on and it was sitting on the ground, you could still utilize it, move it around, or kind of put it in a lower position if you wanted to. All right, everyone, I'm Will from Cattail Antennas here at Core Performance. I appreciate you guys for sticking around. If you got any more questions, uh, you can find me at my website, cattailantennas.com, Instagram, at cattailantennas. And more recently, I started a YouTube channel, hopefully answering a lot of commonly asked questions. And you can find me at that channel at cattailantennas.